really terrible snowstorm that we dealt with on Wednesday. Uh, I'm really glad we canceled the server discussion group to avoid the bad weather. <laughs> oh well. On the positive side, I think that based on yesterday, spring is here, right? <laughs> Hooray! Change of seasons. Uh, plus, we lost an hour of sleep, so that's the other signal for spring, I guess. All right, let's pray. Let's pray. Gracious God, speak to our hearts. Give us the courage to love, to forgive, to turn our lives around. Guide us on the long road that leads to you. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Traveler. Amen. Some of us, when we hear this story, remember the road. Winding away from home, promising so much, calling out to us. Until we can't stand it anymore, we have to get away. No matter what family or faith or duty have to say about it, we're out the door. The wind's in our faces, there's no looking back. We remember getting to that far country when the road that we started on slows to a stop. And at first, this new place, away from home, is just great. When you've got cash to spend, everybody's your friend. Until, of course, the money runs out, and then nobody returns your calls. And this is only a small comfort when your phone service gets turned off. <laughs> they were calling me back anyway. We remember that swallow in the throat, that churn in the gut, doing the terrible, doing the humiliating, facing down danger, just to get something to eat, just to get a place to sleep. We remember the clouds gathering, then starting to rain on our cold skin. We remember standing on the bottom, knee deep in the muck, and realizing it can't be any worse than this to try to go home. We remember the long journey back, stitched together with hope, not for forgiveness or a return to what was, but just hope for a little mercy, enough to survive on, enough to stay alive. We remember the tired feet, the empty belly, the dry and dusty eyes on the walk home from distant lands. For others of us, when we hear this story, we remember the road too, and that we chose not to take it, as inviting as it was. We remember watching the traveler walking away, freed from responsibility, off to unknown adventure, and we remember hardening our faces, stiffening our spines, and bending over to pick up the double burden, our own, and the one left behind. We remember the hard work in the fields, rough hay scratching our skin, sweat stinging our eyes, the sun beating down in the summer, cold rains in the winter. As we get out there and do what has to be done, morning, afternoon, evening, and then morning again. The right way is narrow, and very few can keep it. And then after a couple of years, <coughs> the traveler is returned. The celebration is on. And it feels like a kick in the gut. Am I worth anything? Is all this effort, all this work and sacrifice, does it mean anything? Or would I only be important if I ran away, left it all behind, did whatever I wanted, does what I do even matter to you? Do I even matter to you? One father, two sons, and they're both standing outside. Of course, says the father, of course you matter to me. Of course. I love you so much. Everything I do, everything I have is for you. I'm not holding anything back. The world is yours. But please understand, when I held your brother in my arms, whose face I hadn't seen, whose voice I hadn't heard, who I'd never thought I'd see walking that road again, when I saw him, dusty and tired and ashamed and too thin, it was like he'd come back to life after being dead. It was like a miracle, like an unbelievable miracle. And if a miracle doesn't call for a party, then I don't know what will. I love you, son. So will you come inside? This story is traditionally called the prodigal son. 
And it's easy to see why. The younger son takes up most of the action, right? With his dramatic rejection of his family, his fall from grace, and the return home to a merciful welcome. And there is a story here about God's boundless and forgiving love, God's extravagant welcome for us. And in particular, for those of us who make big mistakes, who wander far from home. But the story really isn't for the younger brothers among us, or at least not only for them. Do people ever change? Does the younger brother become as responsible as his older brother? Jesus doesn't tell us that part of the story. He leaves us instead with all those older brother Pharisees and religion scholars asking that question from the Father, will you come inside? Will you be part of a family that forgives and welcomes home your long lost brother, whatever his faults, his mistakes, his shameful behavior? That's the dramatic moment the whole story leads up to. What will the elder brother do? Can he forgive like his father? Can he learn to love his brother in spite of what he's done to their father? Can he do it for his father's sake? By his father's example? Here's something that might help. When the father runs out to the younger son and meets him on the road, it's a tremendous moment of grace. For the elder son, the moment of grace is this. When the father says, Everything I have is yours. It may be that he's forgotten, or we've forgotten, or just didn't know all the gifts that God shares with us when we're living at home. One father, two brothers, and both are standing outside. So, brothers and sisters, whether you find yourself running away from home in God, or standing in a pigsty eyeing the corn cobs, whether you're out sweating in the fields or outside looking in through the door with your arms folded, God's call in our story today is this. I love you. Come inside and love each other. Thanks be to God. Amen.